Hello everyone, welcome once again to another episode of Jupiter's Croc here on the Outpost Unknown YouTube channel. My name is Matthew, joining me as always down there in Memphis is Ronan. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. You sound a little down, uh, did you, did you have an okay day? Do you need a little pick-me-up? Oh, no, no, I'm good. I have a, I have a bag of uh, trolley uh, gummy worms, sour gummy worms. Uh, you know, it's, it's gonna be okay. What do you think of the twin snakes? The, oh, you're the, oh, the Metal Gear. The, no, the no, Metal Gear just stop. Solid remake? Just stop. Joining also uh, of a fine connoisseur of the twin snakes here in Lincoln is Steve, also known as yeah, Plotticus. Uh, twin snakes are amazing. Yes, they should. They should be in like everyone's pool of go-to candy. Absolutely, Ronan. You've never heard of the twin snakes. With the, the Metal Gear Solid remake on the GameCube. No, we're talking about candy. No. Okay, well, uh, go go get yourself a bag. Your life will be changed. I, I, I have, I've never even seen a bag before. So tonight, everyone, we are going to be talking about episode 9. <laughs> <laughs> episode 9 of Spartacus Blood and Sand. This one is titled Whore. And, uh... Problematic well, at title. Problematic. Problematic title, problematic things going on all throughout this episode. <laughs> so, with that, let's just toss it over to Plotticus so he can weave his way I... through the minefield that is this episode. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you two to step up and fill in some gaps because there is so much going on in this episode. And I, uh, let's see, it starts with uh, Duro and Agron, and they're like, oh boy. She was golly. It's been two weeks since we've had since we've gotten the mark of the Brotherhood. Now the last episode was actually called the Mark of the Brotherhood, and I remember I recall no marking of Brotherhoods going on. Did they actually? Did people actually get the mark last episode? And no, I have forgotten. No, it? no, it's 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 a time jump of like you know however long gladiator training takes they but it, they, yeah. they passed the test is basically what it means but it just they it, just decided it, we didn't need to see it because we yeah i I, I i get that it's just like it, it just dawned on me that the mark the episode called mark of the brotherhood had no markings of brotherhood in it uh, anyways uh duro and agron are now full-fledged uh, gladiators they have the mark of the brotherhood uh Vero is there, and he's being very salty because he's trying to make amends with his wife, and rightly so, because he's been uh, kind of a dickbag the last couple episodes. Uh, but he's he, he's heard nothing back. He's got no response from his wife, and Spartacus basically tells him, you, you kind of deserve this, yeah. uh, but uh, I know you're broke because you gambled away all of the money that you should have been sending to your family. Let me pay for Asher to, uh, to send a, a fresh message to your family uh and, and so that happens uh xena is butting up to lycania who is one of the friends of uh of lithia that olithia introduced xena to friends in uh, quotes and, yeah friends <laughs> in quotes uh it lycania is she wants to fuck spartacus period uh <laughs> so she wants to partake in the the pleasures of the house of Badiatus. And so, Which are fine that, and known across all of Rome. <laughs> yes, but no one knows who is partaking. They yeah. just know that partaking is happening. Uh, it's a plot point later on uh, that secrets have to be kept. Uh, but uh, like any of decides that she, the, so there's there's a bunch of naked slaves and they're all wearing masks. And Lycania is going to pick a mask, and she chooses the one that is being worn by Mira, who is become going to become a, a important person uh, starting from this episode through the like the end of, of season two. Uh, but anyways, Lycania has uh, picked a mask, and then Alithia shows up, uh, very bouncy and bubbly, and she's like, "Oh, I, I guess I showed up too early." Like she like. Alithia was supposed to show up the following day, uh, but she showed up a day early, and she very obviously did this on purpose because she wanted to eaves eavesdrop on what's going on with Lycania. Um, now, did she uh, do this on pur purpose, or was this set up by uh, you know a mysterious other person? I, I had that same question as well. Alithia did this on purpose. Yeah, I, 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 
kind of lean towards what Ronan was saying. I thought that maybe Xena had sort of plotted this out from the beginning. I don't believe so because Xena didn't fully turn on Alithia until Alithia made it known that she wanted to fuck Crixus. Yeah. Which hasn't happened yet. Yeah, you could be right. It just came across a little. I am right. I am Plotticus. Okay. Uh, I thought Alithia did this. My, my take was Alithia did this on purpose, specifically because she didn't. Because, uh, you know, Alithia owns Xena. She doesn't want one of her other female friends, like, moving in there and, and stealing Xena. Alithia wants to be in charge of Xena. And, like, um, Kinia is what, like, the daughter of Crassus or something? Like, the like, richest like, yeah, like, like cousin, cousin or something. Cousin, like, yeah, yeah. We, haven't, we haven't seen Crassus yet, but yeah, he's going to be a big player richest later on. Richest man in Rome. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, Badiatus is all about this. Like, you know, buddy up to all of the wives of rich Roman famous political people you possibly can because that just, you know, sets us up for the future. Um, anyways, uh, Alithia immediately figures out what, uh, what Lycania is up to. And then some time, uh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of complete uh, what Alithia is up to here. Uh, this is... Uh, like the next day, Alithia comes back, and she's kind of beating around the bush. Like she, she wants to also fuck a gladiator, but she kind of like, <laughs> she kind of like, she wants Xena to kind of talk her into it. Uh, for I don't know how else to describe that. Like, like Alithia is like, like do you do you think Alithia's worry about being caught fucking a gladiator like in this scene here it was like. Was was that legitimate? I think or so. What... See, I, I think know. it's legitimate guess... because she she is a you know proper. She she says like if any were anybody were to find out about this, I would be dead. And even at the end, when when things go down, which we'll talk about, she even says like I'm gonna be killed for this. So yeah, I, I guess until until Alithia gets her her like first come up and like later on in this episode like i don't trust anything that she does like i feel like she is she's trying to pretend to be worried so that xena will be more accommodating but who knows like i mean apparently there are multiple ways to interpret this uh but the day after like Kitty is there alithia shows up and uh decides i want to fuck a gladiator too and xena says well how about vero and alithia says oh no vero is far too common uh i think you and i share the same taste i want to fuck crixus uh, and so, uh, this goes Zena, over well. Zena loses her shit because there's a scene before this. I mean, I'm jumping around because <laughs> there's so much going on in this episode. There's a scene before this where Zena uh, and Crixus are fucking, and afterwards Zena wants to cuddle, and she tells Crixus, "You are mine and mine alone. You belong to me." And then, like five minutes later, Alithia shows up and says, "Actually, I want to fuck Crixus too." And so Zena starts throwing shit, she's yelling, she's screaming, Badiata shows up and is like, what the actual fuck is going on? And, and, <laughs> it's and like, Zena... you're costing us money, you're destroying everything. I like when she yeah. Navy is there, she's like, get out of my sight, slave! <laughs> she's yeah. so good in this, she's so good in this scene. Uh, Zena's like, Alithia, uh, Alithia, or, sorry, Zena kind of like pours her heart out to Badiatus. Like, Zena is very aware that Alithia is not really her friend. That Alithia is you know, doing this because she's getting something out of it. She's getting access to this ludus that she that, that she enjoys, and Zena is very aware of all of all of the, the the barbs that are coming her way from Alithia, because Alithia is constantly like putting her down in a way that makes it sound like she's being friendly, but you know it's obvious to everyone, including Zena, that she's not. And Zena has just been going along with it because they're still trying to get uh, Glaber's patronage. Well, Alithia uh, makes this... that comment with when uh, she's talking to uh, Lucretia earlier on the episode. She's like, "Well, when I first when I first came here, I, I thought you were so pathetic. Basically, you had no money. Yeah. You're, uh, and now look at you. You know, the the higher ups in Rome are coming to visit you. And she's even putting her down in that moment <laughs> even yeah. for her success. And, and when talking about Lycania. Uh, Alithia reminds her, like, yeah, Lycania is a woman, is a Roman war woman of proper standing, and she will not yeah. hesitate to remind you of it. Never mind the fact that Alithia does that like seven times an episode. But this <laughs> is the line 
Xena has had enough of Alithia's shit, and she expects Badiatis to to support her in basically you know, get, you know, ditching ditching Alithia. And Xena's like, oh, we I, we can buddy up to Lycania. Like, I, I we don't have to fuck with Alithia anymore. And and Badiatis is like, look, until like someone gives us some fucking patronage, we are buddying up to everyone that wants to buddy up with us. Do this, uh, like do what you gotta do to keep Alithia happy, and you know it sucks yeah, that Crixus is going to bang someone else, but that's the way shit's gonna go down. Well, that, that's Zena the fun. That's the great thing plan. about the scene. But that's the great thing about the scene because we find out later. I'm gonna spoil a little bit going ahead to like the last episodes, but we find out that Body Otis has known about uh, Xena and Crixus like this entire time. Yeah. But in this scene. He rolls in, but he acts like he he has no yeah. idea. He's like he's like, what are you talking? Why do you ca- why is it pissing you off that this slave is gonna have sex with Alithia? Like, who gives a fuck, right? He never even lets on to her that he has any idea that this is this is going on, which is just brilliant piece of acting by John Hanna. He's so yeah. good in it. Hundred uh, percent. But anyway, so Xena hatches a scheme, and we're gonna come back to the scheme later because we need to go back and talk about what's happening with the gladiators. Uh, Asher and Crixus both get cleared to to train again, and Crixus comes out. He has to basically threaten the doctor into uh, letting him uh, go back to, to training. Uh, I didn't see that as a threat. threat. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even see it as friendly. I didn't see it as a threat though. I just sort of say like maybe he's friends with this doctor now because the doctor and him have spent so much time together. He was just kind of like, "Come on, bro! Like tomorrow, right? Tomorrow." I didn't see it as a threat. Oh, I did. So apparently there are lots of ways to interpret yeah. absolutely every fucking thing that happens in this episode. Uh, Which is I, great. I, I, in I absolutely to... felt like if if the Doctor had insisted on a week or two, Crixus would have lost his shit on the Doctor. No. In fairness to, in fairness to Steve, like, you know, a friendly, like, you know, that, that could have been, like, a very friendly threat. Uh, because because I mean it's Crixus like he he could smile and still gut you. All this no. is looking good for me. Crixus is not gonna kill the Doctor of the Lunas. Oh, Come I, on now. I you know, Crixus has shown that he gives no fucks about anyone that isn't Badiatis and who doesn't have the mark of the Brotherhood. Right, but I if he think... kills the Doctor, you think that Badiatis is gonna let him go back out and fight? That'd yes! be a huge problem. No, no, why? Why, no, why no. would that be a problem? Why would that be a problem? Explain. Well, it'd be a problem. Obviously, this medicus has been with this with Bodyatus and his family forever. Bodyatus doesn't like, care. I think Body he Otis does. Has made it clear that he doesn't care that he uh, can get I rid of anyone at any time. Listener, listener out there, tell us what you think. Do you think that Crixus was threatening the Medicus or not? Leave yeah. a comment below. Let, let, let us know how Badiatis, the guy that was ready to sell Crixus yesterday, is suddenly loyal to his fucking doctor that's not a gladiator. Ah, uh, that doctor has brought a lot of gladiators through some shit. He's valuable. He's highly valuable. So is Crixus, and Badiatis was going to sell him. <laughs> Not in body. Well, when Badiatis was going to sell him, he didn't think Crixus was valuable. That's the difference. Uh, I disagree. I, what do you mean Rodan, disagree? Rodan, that's Rodan total. That's facts. <laughs> I mean, that, Rodan, that is do you think Badiatis? Do you think Badiatis gives any fucks about this doctor? Uh, more than he would care about Pietros, because the doctor is more valuable. This is probably the Look. doctor that also helped Animaeus get all the way through his injuries. Like, this doctor is important. Yeah, a, a doctor is more important than, like, you know, a Pietros, or, you know, just some, you know, slave who's like, yeah, br- bring me a cup of water, bring me the wine, you know, because, like... I disagree. You... I think I think Crixus could have just massacred this doctor, and Badiatis would have bought another doctor for $3, <laughs> And then, it makes you, like, like, said, okay, the doctor... clearly, clearly Crixus is ready to go back to fighting. Is the doctor... Okay, here's a question that is kind of, you know, we're just going to derail this entire th- episode thing. Is the doctor a slave? It's got to be, right? So. Uh, but, like, you say that, like, he's got to be, but, like, where's where's the evidence that he is? It's a good question. Does he... We don't actually see if he lives in the Ludus or not. Is it just a doctor? Well... Isn't didn't earlier on in a uh, 
in an episode, uh, Badia, something happened. I remember Badia saying, fetch the Medicus. Like, they had to go out in the middle of the night and get and bring the doctor in. So maybe the doctor doesn't even live with the, Maybe the doctor is an actual citizen. I don't know. I mean, Xena was ready to kill him if, uh, or at least cut his hands off if Crixus were to not survive the Ocalese. Well, that's because she loves him, and she's going to say anything yeah. at that but point because, in time. Because, yeah, but because she, that's because she's dick drunk, you know? It's like, like yeah, of course she's going to say that. Yeah, yeah she's going to say right, Well, yeah, I guess, listener, be, let us know what you think. Uh, I think these guys are crazy, and no one gives no. a shit about this doctor. Anyways, uh, Crixus and Asher go back to training. Crixus comes out and gets kind of a hero's welcome from uh, from the other gladiators. And then Asher walks out like he's got the biggest dick. Like, Asher has returned to training. Who will stand against me? I warn you, I thirst for blood. And no one takes him seriously. And then Badiatis is like, uh, Asher, uh, can we chat? Can we just have a little little sidebar real quick? And Badiatis tells him, you are not going back to being a gladiator. You are too valuable to me in your current role. Well, what's so good about this is Asher walks in when the the highly valuable Medicus is clearing <laughs> clearing Crixus, and uh, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm getting this brace off my leg. You know, Badiat has told me as soon as I get this brace off my leg, I can go back to being a gladiator or whatever. And Crixus just thinks it's hilarious. He's like, you really? Keep, stay the fuck out of my way. And then when he comes out acting all chest puffy, and they're they're like literally laughing at him. Like nobody in this Ludus, none of the gladiators respect Asher at all. None, not a single one. And Asher, let's let's go ahead and complete Asher's story for this episode. Asher is very upset by this. Like he starts like telling Dominus, well, "What about my battles against all these people in the arena that that, that we've never seen on screen?" I think we, I'm, th I'm thinking back to Gods of the Arena, like he. W he wins a fight in the arena specifically because uh, Dagon saved him uh, and then he wins the fight against Dagon during the Badiatis tour Tournament of Power by cheating yeah, and then he he survives to the final fight in Gods of the Arena and gets his leg broken by Crixus. Like We've never I actually seen had... him beat anyone without cheating. Yeah, I, think he, I think he might have had a solo fight uh, during the you know the opening games of the arena, maybe, but it's not shown. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Uh, more or less, like the only victory we ever see him get in the arena, at the very least, because I think he mentions like, well, what of my victory when I split such and such's head open with my axe? At the very least, he did, like you know, he did kill someone with an axe. I thought that was but when otherwise... he was double teaming with Dagon. Remember when yeah, Dagon, exactly, like exactly. Dagon, he saves should... him and then he kills the guy after Dagon. Yeah, I should have. Yeah, I should have gone back and looked happens. to see if like the names that Asher drops in this episode were actually the names of the people from Gods of the Arena. Uh, I didn't do that, and I'm not going to. But uh, you know, whatever. Asher is talking himself up. Like I got all these victories in the arena. Clearly, I am a valuable gladiator. And Badiatis is like, no, 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 no. Let's, let's just <laughs> no, let's son. just forget about all that gladiator stuff. Uh, and so he tells he tells uh, Asher, you know, you got a job to do, go do it. And so Asher goes out to find Salonius because Good in a Salonius. previous episode. Good Salonius. Uh, in a previous episode, Salonius tells Asher, hey, you know, eventually Badiatis is going to fuck you over. When that happens, you know, I'll be I'll be here waiting for you. Uh, and so Asher goes to Salonius and says, hey, uh, you know. You were right. Uh, I'm turning on Badiatis. Badiatis, by the way, is planning on killing you this week. He knows that you go and meet this certain prostitute every night, or sorry, uh, uh, like this specific time every week. Uh, you should probably send someone else to to bang this prostitute because Badiatis is coming for you. And sure enough, uh, we see later on Badiatis, Asher, and uh, Spartacus's wife's murder. I don't even know if this guy has a name. Uh, but we haven't seen him in several episodes, but he's there, and he killed the person that he thought was Salonius, as well as the prostitute, and Asher, they, they Asher, this guy, and Badiatis chat about it, but uh, basically, Badiatis is coming for Salonius now. That guy seems to uh, know, though, that that's not, that's not the right guy, because he has, like, a worried look on his face, like, he's eyeballing Asher, and Asher's just kind of looking at him. I think both of them know that they're pulling one over on, on Badiatis. 
Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I do. Regardless, That's uh, the answer. Salonius was supposed to die <laughs> and uh, didn't. Uh, so what else happens? Uh, Mira, we have mentioned her. Uh, someone mentions to Xena, hey, you know, it's been a while since Spartacus has gotten laid. Uh, what if he shows up for, like, Hinnia and ends up being a, a one-pump chump? We don't want that to happen. And so Xena just says, oh, hey, Mira, uh, go fuck Spartacus tonight. And Mira shows up, and Spartacus is not interested. Spartacus doesn't want to have sex with anyone who has been, like, commanded to have sex with him. Uh, and so he sends Mira away. And the next day, Xena chews out Mira and tells her, no, you are going back tonight, and you are going to fuck Spartacus, or... <laughs> Uh, bad things are going to happen to you. Uh, Swords are going to go in places you don't want them to go. Yes. Uh, either Spartacus's cock will be inside you or a sword will. Uh, uh, anyway, so Mira shows so up good. again. She's evil. She's just so evil. 100%. Mira shows up again, and Spartacus again tries to send her away, but Mira says, uh, if... Yeah, you're basically like signing my death warrant if you send me away again. And so Spartacus says, okay, well, I don't want to sleep with you, but I, I do have a job for you. Uh, earlier on in the episode, Asher comes back and tells Pharaoh, hey, I tried to deliver this message to your wife, but the, they were missing. Your, your wife and kid are missing, and there was blood everywhere. And Pharaoh starts beating the shit out of Asher. That's, that's, not, even, that's not correct. Vero and Asher start fighting, and I would say Asher surprisingly like actually holds his own to an extent against Vero, even though yeah. like, Asher hasn't uh, fought in five years. He's a major. Anyways, he's a major gladiator. He's awesome, Steve. He's amazing. Hundred percent. Like remember all of those victories in the arena. Oh, one thing before uh, I it, forget, I did think it was kind of douchey when uh, when Mira goes in that second time. And Spartacus is like, no, 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 yeah, uh, we're not gonna have sex. He's like, but you can have the floor. <laughs> I was like, come on, Spartacus, be a gentleman. Give her your cot. You can, you can sleep on the floor. Come on. Right. Um, anyways, uh, Asher gives Vero bad news. Vero starts to fight, and Vero gets like sent to the prison within the prison. He's like locked up in chains for the night. Uh, uh, but going back to Spartacus and Mira. Spartacus says, I don't want to sleep with you, but I do have a job for you. Find out what happened to to Vero's wife and child. And I have no idea what this means. Is Spartacus commanding her to sneak out of the Ludus? Yeah, does how, Spartacus, is, how the fuck is Spartacus, she supposed to get out? Yeah, does Spartacus think that someone in the Ludus somehow has information and they're just not telling anyone? I don't know, uh, Spartacus tells Detective Mira to, to get on the case, but I have no idea how she's actually meant to accomplish that. Uh, it's just like a weird thing in this episode, like, oh hey, you, uh, slave girl I've just met, you look like Batman, go and investigate, go go find out, go solve the mystery of, uh, of, of Vero's, uh, wife and child. Uh, weird, that's, that's a very weird beat in the episode, but that's what happened. Uh, Crixus is out picking fights with the with the newbies, Agron and Duro. Um, kicking their at ass. One point, yeah, kicking their ass. It's not even close. Uh, Crixus sees Navia flirting with a guard, and later on, Crixus is very upset with Navia, but Navia says, will you just fucking trust me for a minute? Look, I stole his fucking key, and so she lets Crixus out of the cage, and they have sex for the first time. Again, this is after <laughs> after Xena has told Crixus that, uh, you know, you belong to me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Spartacus has his first, like, conversation, really, with Agron. Uh, at this point, we have no idea how important Agron is going to become to the series, but Spartacus tells Agron, you got to stop protecting your brother Duro, because uh, if you, you if you basically if you baby him during his gladiator training, what's going to happen when he goes out in the actual in arena and has to fight someone one on one? And so later on, Duro gets into another fight and Agron refuses to help him and uh, get the character development. Uh, our God, are we are we are we at the point now where we can finally talk about Xena's plan? Have I covered all of the tiny bits in the middle that we need to discuss? I think you got most of it, yeah. Okay. So, on to the plan. It is time for Spartacus to fuck uh, Lycania. And so, Spartacus is, like, covered in gold paint and given a mask of his own. And Lycania is 
in this room waiting to be fucked. And she's <laughs> when Crazy Wallace out. also gives him like these instructions, yeah. you are going to be betting a proper Roman woman. Don't do this, this, or this. Yeah, don't make any. No, like anticipate her needs, but don't fucking talk to her. Don't make any noise. You belong to her. I love the uh, scene though, where where Body Otis, way back early on, when yeah. when Body Otis is like, "Hey, look." Um, Basically, he's like, you're not going to fight anybody for, for this Roman's pleasure. You're going to have to basically fuck her. And uh, <laughs> Andy Wheelfield just kind of grins. He's like, I will do what I'm commanded. <laughs> like, I will do whatever I need to do uh, as, as the champion of the House yeah, of Badias, first, I guess. At first, Badiatis thinks that Spartacus is going to say no, but he's no, kind no, of no, like... That's Lucy Lawless who thinks that. Badiatis is well, like, no, no he's well, a puppy dog now. He'll do it. Right. But when when Spartacus and Badiatis are having this conversation, uh, Badiatis tells Spartacus, you're going to fuck this woman, and Spartacus kind of walks away and like looks at a statue, and Badiatis says, do you have concerns? And he's just, he's, he's kind of like anticipating that Spartacus is gonna pull some shit, but when Spartacus says, nope, I'm good, uh, take it all comers, <laughs> Spadi Bar Badiatis is, like, relieved to an extent. Like, there, there was a moment there where Badiatis thought Spartacus was going to say no, but Spartacus ended up saying yes. Anyways, it's time for Xena's plan. Uh, Spartacus is going to go and fuck Lycania, and so they show up, and Spartacus fucks Lycania, but then, weirdly enough, Lycania shows up with Xena. So who's bum, behind... Bum, bum. Who's behind this mask? Who is this masked woman? And the mask comes off, and Spartacus has actually been fucking uh, Alithia. And Spartacus <laughs> baller starts choking move. her. Fucking baller <laughs> move. And Lycania, like, while Alithia is being choked, Lycania is like, ha ha ha, wait until I tell everyone about how the wife of... Uh, Legatus Glaber fucked Spartacus, the the slave that screwed over uh, Glaber and ruined her, and ruined Glaber's good name. Ha 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 ha! And she starts laughing, and Alithia says, "Stop laughing! Stop laughing! Stop laughing!" And she gets up and she slams like Kenny on the ground and starts bashing her head into the floor, splits her head open. Uh, so Lycania is dead. And Badiatis is none too happy about this because Badiatis <laughs> shows up later and is like, "People are always dying in his Ludus. <laughs> what the actual fuck is going on? We are screwed. We are so dead. Like the cousin of Marcus Craxus is has been murdered in our Ludus. We are fucking fucked." And uh, Zena says, "No, no, no, no. Don't worry." Uh, like, Kenya kept all this a secret. She didn't tell anyone about this. She didn't tell her slaves. She didn't tell anyone where she was going. She arrived alone. Uh, all we have to do is hide the body, and no one will know about this but us. And so Badiatis says, okay, well, what about Alithia? And Xena's like, oh, don't worry. I'll handle Alithia. And Xena <laughs> goes to Alithia and basically reveals to Alithia, like, hey, uh, I knew what I was doing. I intended to fuck you over. I own you now. You will do what I say, and I will protect the secret, and then you won't be murdered. How's that for a deal? And Alithia has no choice but to accept. So the, the shoe is on the other foot now. Xena now has p power over Alithia. Xena has versa. hand in the relationship. <laughs> yep. And Badiatis and Spartacus go and, and have a conversation. They they reassert their loyalty to one another, and that's the episode. So yeah, much happened episode. in this episode. This is a pretty great episode, not gonna lie. Zena's fucking devious. I, I would say this is probably the episode uh, that has just overall um, Lucy Lawless's best sort of performance because she's evil she's like enraged she's like you know doing the sexy thing she's like all over the map in this episode it's glorious yeah she's fantastic i mean everybody in this episode is great uh but yeah xena steals the show and it's not even close like she she late she gets wronged and then she immediately hatches a plan for revenge which i would i think actually goes better than she thought because i don't think xena intended for like Kenya to be murdered i think she no. was like i'm i'm done with alithia i'm going to ruin alithia and then i will replace alithia with like but it actually worked out 
better because now she essentially has a a rich Roman woman as her slave. Feel free to to jump in with with thoughts at this point. <laughs> uh, I have a few. Okay, so I listened to the audio commentary track. Um, I. I am exceedingly disappointed with the audio commentary tracks that are just the actors. And this was one of them. So, um, oh, work is calling. I wonder what, what that's all about. Let's not answer it. The um, network is back up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, I listened to the audio commentary track. It was Viva Bianca, who plays Alithia. It was uh, Lucy Lawless, who plays Lucretia. And it was Andy Whitfield, who plays Spartacus, of course. And I'm like, what an interesting, strange episode to have all three of them doing a commentary track on. Because I was like, okay, th there's this is a very, like, sex-heavy episode, right? Um, and I was like, well, this is just going to feel awkward. There's no, like, moderator. There's not a director there to moderate this conversation. Where is it going to go? Turns out it basically goes nowhere. Um, like most of these audio commentaries with the actors, they don't really say much on here. So I got like three notes. Um, Andy Whitfield said that working with John Hanna was like the best part of working on the show. Uh, because he was just hilarious and uh, apparently his personality is just awesome at all times. Um, and Xena agreed with him that John Hanna is like the best. So... Never got that. There's a scene when uh, when Badiatis is uh, having sex with a slave, and Xena's like, they're like having um, gives them the nipple pinchy. Yes, uh, sex position <laughs> is what they would call it, where like uh, dialogue is occurring while sex is is happening, and um, it turns out that Lucy Lawless ad libbed the twisting of Badiatis's nipple on that, so that wasn't. But in then Badiatis actually came. <laughs> He might have. <laughs> he certainly acted like he did. Um, and then uh, Lucy Lawless said Great that acting. it took forever to shoot the milk bath scene. Uh, now, there's a scene when when uh, uh, Xena first calls Lucy or Amira in, and she's basically like, you know, take off your clothes because she didn't have sex with Spartacus. And Xena's like, what do you mean you didn't have sex with him? I want to see if you're like, are you deformed? Like, <laughs> why would he not go after you? Um, and so, uh, but Lucy Lawless is topless in this like milk bath the entire time, and she said I didn't that even it, noticed it was milk uh, yeah, until like later on someone mentioned that it was a milk bath. Yep, yep, it's a milk bath, and uh, but the, it took forever to shoot, according to her, because everything was quote too modest. Uh, sort of implying she didn't come out and say that the director wanted to see more naked Lucy Lawless, uh, but apparently that's the implication. The director is like, more Xena boobs. We need more. I don't know if she was dropping down into the milk or what, <laughs> but they had to shoot it forever, and she had to keep having her makeup touched up and everything because of the milk bath. And that's basically all I got from the audio commentary, unfortunately. Um, they, I think the, uh, Viva Bianca said that the gold stuff that was put all over Andy Whitfield's body smelled horrible. So, um, and they were, when they were having their sex scene, which is, uh, Lucy Lawless says that's the best sex scene in film she's ever seen, uh, which is interesting comment. Uh, but they said that they were constantly laughing behind the masks the entire time because they just thought it was so hilarious what they were doing. So, but that's basically it. They don't, they didn't talk about much of anything on here. You don't get real cool behind the scenes tidbits or, or anything. So that's all I got from the audio commentary, unless you guys watched it and have something I missed. I did not. These commentaries, though, they, like the ones that I was watching, they, they seldom have any real information worth knowing. Yeah, agreed. Usually when there's a director on or something like that, uh, or the producers, something like that, it's you get a little bit more, but the actors, I don't know. It's, it almost comes across like they were embarrassed, right? Because they're watching, you know, Lucy, cause Lucy Lawless, when, when her scene came on, she, she like audibly goes, oh God, let's just skip this scene. Because she's, I mean, they're, they're sitting there watching her and she's topless, right? And then, you know, Viva Bianca didn't really want to say and talk at all about the sex scene other than it's the wildest, craziest thing she's ever done as an actor. So they're all just kind of silent what? watching each other's naked bodies. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I, I can't. I, I don't know what they painted uh, Spartacus up with, but he doesn't leave gold smudges on Viva Bianca, which is uh, yeah. I don't know what they painted him with, but it doesn't rub off. So you know, that's a 
That's that's you know it's a weird detail. Well, I would say that uh, Viva Bianca is a smoke show. My God! Oh, that was the other thing. <laughs> that was the other thing. So Viva Bianca did say that when when her friends watched this episode, um, that obviously she was in the mask, and her friends like texted her immediately. And they knew it was her. There was no like big reveal that oh this isn't really Lachinia. They knew it was her because when she's walking across the uh, the Ludus towards Spartacus. She has a, a unique way that she walks, and all of her friends knew that was that was her as as she was walking across. So they they did not get the uh, the crazy reveal, but we all knew we all knew when we saw her. We we've seen those breasts before. We knew it was we knew it was her. There's, there's only one person those titties can possibly belong to. <laughs> I mean, we've seen her before. I mean, all I'm saying is it's it's not like I don't think like do you think that they're actually trying to make this a Holy shit! Reveal like the audience really wouldn't know that that was that was her. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think back years I can't... ago when I first watched this episode, and I honestly don't remember if I figured it out or not. Yeah, me either. I, I don't remember if I was sort of like blown away or if I was like, "Oh man, he's fucking a lithia. This is gonna go so now." I. I, I'm gonna go on the I'm gonna go on the side of I didn't see it coming, but it's been like over ten years. I don't remember. Yeah, I also think it's interesting. Uh, there's two two uh, mentions here. I don't remember if this was no no no. It was um, earlier this season. Steve, you made a comment when uh, Spartacus was trying to convince Badiatis to um, you know find his his wife. Right, and there's a moment where like Asher, Spartacus, and Bodyatus are there, and Bodyatus is telling him like go kick rocks, basically, and starts to walk away, and and uh, Spartacus like grabs him by the arm, right? Like hold on, hold up, and then there's that look of terror on Asher's face, like holy shit, you just touched Bodyatus, you're just a slave, <laughs> you, you can't yeah. do that sort of thing. Two things happen in this episode. Number one, Asher does that to Bodyatus. And Bodyatus like looks down at the hand that's on his like shoulder, and then you look back up, and Asher's like, "Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me." Um, and then there's a moment when uh, when sort of Spartacus does it as well, and I just thought that was kind of interesting that Bodyatus, he he's not like it, even though this is like taboo, right? Like they're just slaves; they're not allowed to put their hands on you know the the man of the house, so to speak. Bodyatus never seems to really care all that much. I mean, he doesn't like punish them for doing it or anything. It's more just like he gives them the eyes. Like I'm going to fucking kill you if you do it again. But they keep doing it and it doesn't seem to matter to him. <laughs> I, I think Spartacus it bothers do, him for us. A... doing it again in this episode, did he? Or are you, are you still referring sure. to the old one? No, I'm pretty yeah, sure I Spartacus did Asher it. Too. Doing it. Asher yeah, did yeah, it I and Spartacus remember. does it as well. I'd have to go back and I just watched it right before the show, so it happens. Trust me. Doubt. I'm pushing X to Doubt. <laughs> Push X to Doubt. Because <laughs> Spartacus and Bodyatus only interact twice in this episode, right? Like, when when Bodyatus tells him, hey, you're going to fuck like Kenya, and then at the end when Spartacus is, like, washing the gold off, I don't remember them. I can't be crazy. Uh, I can't be crazy. Mm -hmm. Or maybe no, I can. I think you Who are. Knows? Doubt. No, no, I, think, <laughs> I, th I think you are. Steve is right. That's the only time that they really interact this episode is when he's first telling them that he's going to do it. I guess I'm just going to have to yeah. watch this episode again then. I <laughs> How dare you. Imagine what scene you're going to go slow-mo <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, this is a great episode. Great episode. Love this episode. Uh, it sets up. Like, just tease up what's going to happen, and uh, especially with Steve's favorite episode coming up here. Yeah, yeah his, his shit gets real sad, uh, and somehow real e even darker uh, yeah. in the next couple episodes. Alithia, you know, um, maybe Xena's underestimated her a little bit. We shall see. We shall see. Ronan, your thoughts on this episode? What do you think about it? They're like this is a really this is a really good one. It's a lot well, almost that's a lot, but it's better than the last episode, which you know, because I remember we were talking about that. It's like the the last episode. It's an okay one. It's but it's this is a much better kind of setup one where you can tell that like you know they're raising the stakes, whereas the last one was just kind of setting up this episode. Really, when you think about it. Uh, it's like it's it's a it's it's a it's a very good episode and like uh, the the stakes all the tension is starting to get raised up and now like uh, like we know 
we we know that more plans are being laid into a, like a, into place. We know that now, like you know, there is a plan set in motion for Salonius to some extent. And how is that going to go? Oh no! And yeah, now Luke now now Lucinia is like very firmly within the grasp of Lucy Lawless. Uh, and and you know, like they're setting stuff up with, with Varro too. Like so so many so many pins are being set up, only to be knocked down. Speaking of last episode, uh, it if it it should have been clear before, but if it wasn't, uh, Body Otis and Xena, uh, uh, they're knew. not oblivious to the fact that yeah, they uh, knew. It, it's it, in the beginning it, of this episode. Yeah, Alithia like Alithia paid Segavax to kill Spartacus. Like Body Otis and Xena know this, and they're having to uh, r- roll with it because uh, they still want uh, Glaver's patronage. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening to another episode of Jupiter's Croc. Uh, next Thursday, we will be back with the episode Party Favors, which is Steve's favorite episode of the series. Yep. Going and, all in. Uh, Going all in. Oh, I've, well, already, I already, I've already folded out of the Already folded. Yeah. <laughs> Sons of bitches. Well, I'll Sons let you go all in. Bitches. Go ahead. Go all in, Steve. No, no. no. We're waiting for next hand. We're all going all in. <laughs> okay, Jesus. <laughs> this is happening. This is happening, Continue folks. the outro. Continue the <laughs> Yeah, so yes, party keep, keep favors. Fine time. Party favors, uh, just to, to tee up a little bit of what we'll talk about. I remember when I first saw that episode and I was shocked. I was stunned at the thing that they did because it was completely unexpected to me. And uh, and that's what this show does so well. It's being able to set up things that are like, well, I think it's going to go this way. And they just like pull the rug out from underneath you and it goes a completely different way. It really sets the stage, I think, next episode where we're really going to start seeing Spartacus is like, how the fuck do I get out of this place? How do I get out of this place? And uh, trying to be a salesman of sorts to try to, you know, get everybody ready to try to get out of this place. But he's got a couple of people he's really got to convince. He's got to convince Crixus and Animaeus, and will he be able to do it? Yeah, cause the, the stuff he does with uh, what's her name, Sira, uh, like like M- Mira, is that her Mira. name? Mira. Yeah. Mira, that's it. Yeah, like like because like at at this point he still hasn't quite fully signed on to the whole you know like uh, like the, the idea of him being a, a liberator for people's rights, but they do set up that that is still part of it. Like you know he that's you know he'll happily fuck this random Roman woman who wants it. But he's not going to do anything to a slave who was forced into it. So we know that that that, it's that consent, moral compass, yeah, that 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 <laughs> that that, com- that moral compass is there. Like you know, the I like uh, like him still not being down with the idea of slavery, really fully committing to it yet. So what so, if Mira had been like, no man, I I really want to have sex with you. Like I'm consenting well, to this. Let's do it. Well, that happens later on, and so. Well, like... yeah, I mean, I'm talking about in that moment. <laughs> Would he have believed her? Uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, he could've, she could have talked him into uh, it. Hmm. I don't think she could have talked him into anything. I mean, she was All really right, showing well, herself we, and been like, "Don't we've been, you want me?" We've been me? killing time for two or three minutes while <laughs> okay. that hand ended. So we, now we can comply. We can finish up with poker. All right, yep. everyone's going all in. Don't, don't look, look at your cards. Don't look at your cards, Ronan. Well, fuck off. <laughs> Is that Larry the Cable Guy in the back there? Alright, all in. Boom. All, all in. in. See, the li- uh, the actual viewer slash listener, they don't, they're not here to Are you going all a, in? I, I, hit, I hit all in. What, what is happening here? There okay. you go. All right. Sometimes you have to do it twice. It's this yeah, PS4 button, lady. maybe. I don't know, the PS4 controller. <laughs> The button must stick. It probably know. is. <laughs> mm. But this is what the people are here for. Uh, they don't care about hearing about Spartacus. They're here for the last two minutes of every episode to see who's going to come out on top <laughs> when we all go in. Mongrel on mongrel! How do you Who have will win? Caps. Yeah, caps. I, I was one more time. Caps. Caps. I do that all the fucking time. <laughs> You're, oh, yeah, all right. Oh, all right. Yes. All right. Yes. Oh, king nine. King nine. Like that. Ten oh, oh, that's got fuck. nothing. Queen. He's got. Oh, I need uh, no, Jesus! I just. Need... <laughs> I'm currently in the lead. I don't. I don't even fair. know if I can win. 
<laughs> I think I, I, I've definitely lost this. Oh, I no. hate this game. What, what, I, I hate poker. I hate oh, cards. No. I hate the oh, very concept. No. Alright, I need a nine. I need a nine. Who won? Oh, I got two pair. Somehow <laughs> I ended up with two pair. I did not win. That person uh, won no. 65,000. Yeah, what a stupid I idea, had. Steve. Yeah, no, I busted out. We, uh, cut, cut, cut! <laughs>